afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us uh, for, for an important event here. Um, I am joined by a number of colleagues who will speak in a moment. Kara Alnazrawi is both the director of the Church Street Marketplace. She's also been leading up through the pandemic our small business support uh, uh, effort, pandemic effort. Um, we have Chuho Sampson, who is the owner of Single Pebble, here, who we'll hear from in a few minutes. Doreen Kraft, the director of Burlington City Arts, since we're on her patio here. And the, she will speak about the artist market that will be taking place shortly. And Mark Bouchette, the longtime owner of Homeport and a great institution on Church Street and a longtime partner. Thank you for being here as well, Mark. We are clearly gathered here this afternoon at a, at a very challenging time. We've, we've been living amidst this pandemic now for almost nine months, and we're ending a week in which the virus levels continue to surge nationally across the state and, and even here in Burlington, where we've been so fortunate to be largely spared from these, these levels of infections for so long. So for now, and. For, certainly for the weeks ahead, in large part, our focus must remain on public health and on doing everything ca we can to slow the spread of the virus until we have a vaccine as, as our main strategy for, for protecting the, the most vulnerable to this, to this dangerous disease. At the same time, we know that alongside the public health crisis, of this pandemic, there's another crisis, and that's the economic damage of COVID-19. And this second crisis is what we're really gonna focus on here today. Early on, the federal government came through with a, with a stimulus package, a very significant stimulus package that was critical. Um, and that played a huge role in lessening the pain Americans felt through the early months of this crisis. Now though, that money is almost entirely spent and economic conditions are again worsening. We are in dire need of more federal aid to protect our workers, to support our local business owners, to keep people in their homes, to deliver critical state and local services, and much more. As we continue to call for aid, and um, I do weigh in with our federal delegation in one way or another basically every week, uh, I am t determined to do everything that we can as a local government in the months ahead to make our economic relief and recovery efforts as robust and equitable and racially just as our public health efforts have been for the last nine months. So today, um, you know, because city government can't in any way do it alone, I want to encourage Burlingtonians who are able to, to play an important role in that local recovery and to consider ways that you can patronize our locally owned businesses this holiday season. Our church, church street, our downtown, and our business corridors throughout the city are treasures of Burlington. They provide the livelihood for many of our friends and neighbors. Indeed, 70% of Church Street stores and restaurants are locally owned. They give our city an important part of its distinctive, authentic character. And they offer unique and personal goods that you can't find anywhere else. They multiply the local impact of each dollar you spend by recirculating it through, through our economy, sometimes many times and so much more. And right now, those essential small businesses are hurting. I'm here today to ask Burlingtonians who are shopping and dining this holiday season to consider seeking out our local businesses. There are multiple ways that you can do this. First, and I'm gonna touch on some points and then we'll hear more detail about this. First, um, local businesses in Burlington are operating under strict public health regulations, including capacity limits and mask wearing. And so uh, a lot of thought has been put into how to make in-person shopping safe during this pandemic. Second, as we'll also hear some detail about, many, many Burlington businesses have worked very hard to really alter their businesses during this time and expand alternatives to in-person shopping and dining, offering takeout, curbside pickup, even home delivery. And you can see all those options on a web page in one place that a web page that the city with Cara's leadership has built. It's www.loveburlington.org. 
third, you see behind us these gray booths that have just gone up over the last couple days. There will be three outdoor winter markets on the three upcoming weekends where shoppers can browse goods outside in an environment that's carefully re regulated for COVID safety. We know that doing anything outside is much safer than that comparable activity indoors. Um, I want to give a shout out. You can you can see work continues uh, on this uh, as we speak here, getting the, the power in. Zach Williamson playing a key role in this uh, from VCA as, as he does in so many city initiatives and events. Um, we also want to thank our friends down at Generator who um, fabricated the parts and, and did much of the assembly um, as well. <laughs> Couple final, just a final thought for me. I, I, I truly believe that Burlington can and will emerge on the other side of this pandemic as an even stronger and healthier community. Our locally owned businesses are an important part of that, and I encourage everyone who's able to consider ways to help them. With that, I am going to turn over the microphone now to Kara on the Zrawi. And uh, we'll hear the rest of, from our colleagues, and we'll take some questions. Thank you, Carl. Great. Thank you, Mayor. Hi. Good afternoon. Thanks for being here. Um, I don't have too much to add. I think the mayor hit all the main points of the reason for this gathering here today. Um, I just think it's really important for us all to remember that these business owners and their employees are our neighbors. They're our friends, their children go to school with our children, they are members of our community. And it's also vital to remember that our economy is driven by us. It's not driven by anyone else. It's us, it's our dollars, it's our initiative to go out there and seek local options. This means that we can save our community so that as the mayor said, we can get onto the other side of this pandemic and emerge vibrant and healthy enough to keep going and keep growing. These next few weeks are very crucial for these businesses as we all know. The fourth quarter of any year is mainly the time when these businesses make their most revenue and it's also the time in our economy where the most dollars are being spent. There are safe and contactless ways to do business in Burlington right now and spend your dollars locally. These merchants and restaurateurs have been bending over backwards to come up with ways to safely get their products into your hands. You can do contactless sales, curbside pickup. You can have local delivery. They have expanded website offerings that previously a lot of our local businesses did not have, but we've been working hard to get it to them. You can find them all on loveburlington.org. You can sort by any number of filters to find exactly what you're looking for. So just in closing, I urge all Burlingtonians and everyone in the surrounding communities to please make that extra effort to spend your dollars locally. Thank you. Dorian, Dorian, I think you're next. You want me to go next? Okay. I quite have the, the order today. It's a little magical chairs here. Um, I want to reiterate um, just a couple of the points that were made, but to emphasize the incredible safety that has been what has guided all of our work over the past nine months in dealing with the pandemic with the leadership of our mayor. And, you know, I was talking with somebody yesterday who said to me, you know, but you're encouraging people to go out when, you know, in some ways we've been encouraged to stay home and be safe. But I would say and posit that actually the ways that we're asking people come together is very safe. These are very regulated spaces where people can come together, shop, view all kinds of new products and um, offerings and learn about what's available in the community. And it's so much more fun than shopping online on Amazon or other places. But 
Um, it is an incredibly safe, and I just want to drive that point home because I think that it's important for people to feel that in order to come down. Also, this is a gorgeous downtown, and there are so many public um, murals and statues and beautiful places to stop and great places to, of course, um, take a moment, grab a bite with your family, etc. So, um, I wanted to talk very briefly about the creation of these stalls. Um, they were made uh, and designed by artists, engineers at Generator, and I'd like to say their names. Uh, Elliot Katz, Seamus Hammond, and Alex Hall were in the lead, um, and they did an extraordinary job of adapting some booths that they saw that were used in Montreal and throughout Europe and adapted it for our um, use here and materials. And these were, yes, they've taken a lot of time to put up the first time, but we're going to be able to reuse these over and over again and create opportunities throughout the winter, winter for our community to continue to come together. This weekend, of course, we're featuring artists in the artist market. These stalls will be filled by 19 different artists who will be sharing their craft, their wear, their art form with with you. I encourage you to come down for sheer entertainment to see what is made in this community, what is produced locally. It is, it is totally amazing and it will be a beehive of creativity that you'll get to experience by that. Um, the, the, the last thing that I want to say is that one of the most creative pieces, uh, the silver lining if you will, in this pandemic has been the way that different departments have worked together in ways that we've never done that before. And so for instance, as just an example, the library, friends of the Fletcher Free Library will be out with us here and they'll be a part of this sale and raising funds for the library for books for young people. So we collaborate much um, more creatively, much more often and much more thoughtfully in this time. And um, we're so lucky that has a community that loves each other, cares for each other, and believes that the answers are within all of us. So thank you so much for coming out and um, being with us and sharing the word today. Hello. I didn't expect I have to say it kind of like this. Um, I want to say really grateful the all my decisions so many years and I end up landing in Burlington, Vermont. I feel like since this is a safe place right now. Um, and I want to say that even though there is so many support from the government, but I think that really Vermont, what is really good is we help each other as a community. And I'm really grateful, a single pebble since March, we never closed. I want to be selfish, just talk about single pebble. Many peers in Burlington, many restaurants that have so many different ways way to feed everyone. So I just want to say thank you.
can you can get local deliveries from a lot of a lot of the folks on the marketplace in downtown Burlington. Uh, you can do curbside pickup from almost everybody. Uh, I, I will also say that you know, obviously some folks are going to do in-person shopping, and sometimes it's necessary. You don't know what you want necessarily, and you need to come out and check it out. I'd recommend that folks come Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, you know, even through the thickest of, of, of normal December shopping, those days are fairly light for folks, and it's a good time to come and not uh, and, and and to have the least crowd. Uh, also, many of the businesses are doing uh, shopping by appointment, and you know, certainly for people who are at higher risk, that's a that's a great option because you can come in and essentially be alone in the store and have somebody who you know, a private assistant to to shop with you while you're down there. Um, it, it's, uh, it's a critical time, certainly for retailers and absolutely for restaurants uh, everywhere and, and in Burlington as well. Uh, and it, it's, I would say that it's important to support those things that you like um, because they can go away and made it thus far because of all that support that uh, that our, our community has, has given us and we really appreciate that uh, and there's a you know on the on the other side of it I think uh, some great, really great things have come out of this for you know stuff like this winter market that's going to be uh, wonderful this year uh, the curbside pickups the the deliveries we've never done deliveries before in our life and we'll probably continue doing it after I think many of the restaurants have added takeout and I know that people have wanted them to do takeout for all these years and now they've sort of learned how to do it and how to be successful at it so so I think we're I, I think we come out of this thing richer and better and we just really appreciate all the support that the community has given us as merchants. Thank you. Thanks for that great note to close on, Mark. I, I, I feel um, very similarly about many city operations. We've learned how to do new things in this. Uh, we, we have some dark, challenging months ahead, but there is a light at the end of the tunnel. And when we get on the other side of this, uh, we will be a stronger and better community. Um, we, we got this, this event is about making sure as many of the valuable members, valuable businesses that make up the downtown that offer so much and are so, such a part of the authenticity and the unique, uniqueness of Burlington's downtown, uh, make it through and are, are there with us on the other side. So with that, we'd be happy to answer any questions you have. I just had a question about this um, little market down here. Yeah. How much are these little, little storefronts costing uh, to build? Hard, you have uh, that. There's out. Um, I think they've ended up being about somewhere between eleven hundred and twelve hundred dollars for each, each one. For each, each one. one. Okay. So they're an asset that the city will retain. Yeah, yeah so and that we'll be able to use in the future. Oh, so you, do you plan on doing this maybe again next year if it goes well? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> and you know. Making investments like this, you know, one of the first things we did at the beginning of the of the pandemic was to, uh, in the, the first weeks uh, of it, was to set aside um, out of city reserves about a million dollars so that we can move quickly, make investments like this if we saw ways that um, that we could help help the local community in one way or another, whether it's a, pu a public health intervention uh, like the wastewater testing we've been talking a lot about this week, um, or. Uh, an economic development investment, uh, having these local dollars from the city's financial strength able to invest quickly and move quickly in this tumultuous evolving time um, has has allowed us to do a lot more than we would have if the city council had not supported that if we didn't have those resources. Sorry, can I jump in real yeah. quick? Uh, we, we just clarified our numbers. These booths um, that were designed and created by the generator are a thousand apiece and there are 10 of them. All right, any other questions? If not, thank you all for coming. Oh, you got an off topic. Okay, um, well, why don't, we, why don't we just wrap up this first if, uh, yeah. and I'm happy to talk about other things. So, um, thank you all. Great to see you all. Good yeah. luck with the rest of the holiday thank season. You. Thank you for being here. Good.
and uh, we'll see you all again soon. And thank you all for being here too. So, do you want me to just stay here? Yeah, I just want to question. Go ahead. Um, can you bring up the wastewater testing? Yes. The other day you mentioned that there's more COVID-19 being detected in that wastewater in the city of Burlington. I'm just wondering if you can talk about that a little bit more and just, I mean, you must be happy that you're doing this testing that you're catching so yes, we've been doing this uh, testing we, as a, um, it, an emerging kind of innovative technology starting in August is when we first started uh, the baseline testing and we've been doing it exactly for a moment like this. The promise, the opportunity of wastewater testing is that it is unlike many other ways that we track and measure the virus, many of them happen pretty late in the process after someone has gotten sick and is symptomatic um, or is even in the hospital. That's where a lot of the metrics come and by that time someone has been sick for a long time and they've uh, been at risk of spreading the disease to others. Wastewater testing, pe people get, uh, many people who get COVID-19, they uh, start shedding uh, signs of the virus in their waste um, very early on and so the, what, what we saw with the test results that came back Wednesday is that from before Thanksgiving to the Sunday and Monday after Thanksgiving, there is a substantial jump in the amount of, uh, of the virus in Burlington's wastewater citywide. And the, what we did yesterday is basically raise uh, a warning flag about that, um, announce to people that what we feared that the virus would transmit at social gatherings over the holiday appears to have happened in a significant way. If you were at one of those gatherings and are living here in Burlington, we are strongly urging you to go and get tested right away uh, so that we all can know, you can know, and uh, your neighbors, your neighbors won't know exactly, but the, the community can know, uh, that the public health system can know that you are positive and then hopefully we can contain the virus uh, quickly. So the purpose of putting that information out yesterday was to raise a flag, to make a call to action. If you were at, over the Thanksgiving holiday, a um, social gathering with other households, we strongly urge you to take advantage of the vast testing resources available here in Burlington and get tested as quickly as possible so that we can know whether or not you're positive. All right. Thanks. Great, thank you. Thank you all. I forgot to make one point, and I, this is like, I never do this, so it's okay if I'm back and I'm on camera. <laughs> well, you know, we, we talked about the fact that these cost a thousand to produce and that the city contributed significantly to the creation of them. Northfield Savings Bank is our underwriter for this event, and their funding helps support the making of these as well as underwriting the um, artist market this weekend. So we want a you know big shout out to them for their incredible support. Okay. <laughs>